Hey friends, this is the last video to go over your study guide for the decimal unit test on Friday. So we'll be going over problems 14 through 19. Let's get started. Number 14 says a chocolate bar is 0 and 5 tenths meters long and a piece of candy corn is 0 and 5 thousandths meters long. How many times greater is the length of the chocolate bar than the length of the candy corn? Make sure to show your work. So we're comparing place values right now. So to show my work, what I'm going to do is write down the two numbers. I've got 5 tenths, and I've got 5 thousandths. Now I want to know how many times greater is the 5 tenths than the 5 thousandths. So I can put two zeros in here. And then right away I see that 5 tenths is the same thing as 500 thousandths. So I'm looking at 500 thousandths versus 5 thousandths. And so when I look at that, you can count the hops. One, two. Two hops or two place values different. And we know that every place value changes the value 10 times because we have a base 10 number system. So two hops means it's changing 100 times. So the five in the tenths place is 100 times greater than the five in the thousandths place. So that's how you would solve that problem. It's just comparing place value. All right, let's look at number 15. Miss Ross, Ross measured the side of her garden. It was 206 thousandths <coughs> excuse me, of a meter long. What is the length of the side of the garden in standard form and expanded form? All right, this seems pretty easy, but if we don't pay attention, we could get it wrong. So I'm going to look first at the whole number part. 200 and. The minute I see and, I know that's where the decimal is going to go. So when I write it in standard form, I'm just going to write 200 and. That's the whole number part. Now let's look at the decimal part. Six thousandths. It means I need to put the six in the thousandths place. If I were to put a six right here, that wouldn't be correct. That would be six tenths. So I'm going to put a zero. Now if I write my sixth, it still wouldn't be correct because it would be in the hundredths place. So I've got to put another zero. Now if I write a six, it will be correct because that six is in the thousandths place. So this is the number two hundred and six thousandths. To write an expanded form is pretty easy. It's just digit times value. And I really only have two digits. I have a two in the hundredths place, so I'm going to do two times one hundred. And I'm going to add that to my six, which is in the thousandths place. So I'm going to put it times one over a thousand. And that's how you write two hundred and six thousandths in expanded form. All right, let's move on to number 16. Jada is trying to figure out the area of Mrs. Cummings' carpet. The length of the carpet is 3 and 8 tenths meters, and the width is 4 and 7 tenths meters. Find the total area of the class carpet. The first thing I need to know in order to solve this problem is that area equals length times width. This is a multiplication problem. If I don't know how to find area, then I don't know how to solve this problem. So make sure you remember area equals length times width. Now I can set up my problem. 3 and 8 tenths times 4 and 7 tenths. First thing I'm going to do is hop out those decimals. So that's 1, 2. So I did 2 hops. I'm going to remember that when I find my answer. All right, let's solve like normal. 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 5 is 26. Now, I need to zero and cross out because I'm moving into the tens place. So this isn't really a 4, it's really a 40. So I've put that zero in. Now I can multiply. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15. Now I can add them up. 6 plus 0 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 5 plus 2 is 7. 1 plus nothing is 1. 
Last thing I need to do is remember my hops because right now if I put 1,786, my answer wouldn't make sense. That doesn't match with what I started with, 3 and 8 tenths and 4 and 7 tenths. Because if I were to round these numbers, I could round 3 and 8 tenths to 4 and I could round 4 and 7 tenths to 5. So if I do 4 times 5, I know that my answer should be close to 20. And right now, 1,786 is not close to 20. So I know I need to put those decimals in. I did two hops, so I need to do two hops. One, two. That means I put my decimal between the seven and the eight. Now my answer is 17 and 86 hundredths. 17 and 86 hundredths is close to 20. So I know that my answer is correct. All right, moving on to the next problem, which I kind of wrote over, but that's okay, I can still read it. Chloe is trying to solve the following division problem using decimal models. Show Chloe how to find the quotient using the model. All right, guys, so here's the deal. I know it says to use the models, but on any test and the milestones, you won't have to use the models if you don't want to. So you could always solve this problem using partial quotients. I'm going to show you both ways. So let's do it with the models first, and then I'll show you partial quotients. Four and eight tenths is my total. So I'm going to write a T for total. One and two tenths is my groups of. So that means that my answer is going to be groups. That also means that it's going to be a whole number. This is going to help me out. So I'm going to grab my highlighter tool, and I'm going to highlight my total, four holes and eight tenths. Remember, one hole flat represents one hole. So there's one hole, two holes, three holes, four holes. Now I need to highlight my eight tenths. Every rod represents one tenth, so I'm going to highlight eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so now I've got my total, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I can start to divide up my total. I want to divide it up into groups of one and two tenths, one whole and two tenths. All right, so here's a hole right here. So that represents one group. Now I can come over here and I can take out two of my tenths. And that's part of my one group. Let's do that for my second hole. So here's the beginning of group number two. But I have to remember it's one hole and two tenths. So this is part of group number two. Here's another hole. So this will be part of group number three. And let's go over here and get two more tenths. So that's part of group number three. And another hole here. This worked out perfectly. That's group number four. And look at that. Two more tenths for group number four. So remember, when I take my total, four and eight tenths, and divide it into groups of one and two tenths, I want to know how many groups I made. Well, looking at my model, I made four groups, four whole groups. So my answer is four. No decimals need to put in because I'm looking for groups, and groups are a whole number. Now, if I wanted to solve this using partial quotients, I could come right over here and set it up. One and two tenths into four and eight tenths. The very first thing that I'm going to do is hop that decimal out. I'm going to take one hop in my divisor, which means I have to take one hop in my dividend. So now I'm doing... 48 divided by 12. Using my multiplication facts, I know that 4 times 12 is 48. Subtract, and I get a smiley face 0. Now, let's check my hops. I did one hop on the inside and one hop on the outside. That means I don't need any more hops. Oops, go back. So my answer is just stop. <laughs> my answer is just 4. So that's how I solved this problem using both models and Partial quotients. Almost to the end. All right, number 18. Danny is making necklaces for her friends. She has six and three tenths meters of yarn. She uses seven tenths meters of yarn for each necklace. 
How many necklaces can Danny make with the yarn? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label my parts because I think this is gonna help me. She has six and three tenths meters of yarn. This is her total amount of yarn. She's gonna divide up that yarn into seven tenths meters. She's gonna divide it up into groups of seven tenths. Or you could think of it as pieces of seven tenths. I'm trying to figure out how many necklaces, how many whole necklaces she's making. So the necklaces would represent my groups. So if I'm trying to find groups, then I know my answer is going to be a whole number. And that makes sense because we're looking for how many necklaces, whole necklaces. I don't want to make half of a necklace or part of a necklace, whole necklaces. So my answer is going to be a whole number. So in case you haven't figured it out, this is a division problem because whenever I make necklaces, I'm going to take yarn and I'm going to cut it. And cutting is another word for division. So I'm going to take my total, six and three tenths, and put it inside as my div dividend. I'm going to take my groups of zero and seven tenths as my divisor. The very first thing that I'm going to do is hop that decimal out. If I hop it once in my divisor, I have to hop it once in my dividend. So now I have 63 divided by 7. Using my multiplication facts, I know that 9 times 7 equals 63. When I subtract it, I get that smiley face 0. Now I check my hops. I took one hop on the inside, which means I only need one hop on the outside. So my answer is just 9. Going back, I'm going to ask myself, does that make sense? She makes nine necklaces while well, I'm talking about groups, so it should be a whole number. So yes, my answer does make sense. Danny can make nine necklaces. Last problem. Mr. Tessar is a race car driver. He is completing some calculations before his race on Saturday. Help him with his calculations. The race track is one and thirty-two hundredths times ten to the fourth feet long. How long is the racetrack in standard form? Well, the minute I see this, I say, is that a power of 10 I see? Then all you gotta do is listen to me. There's only one rule, that's not a lot. All you gotta do is move that dot, multiply to the right, to the right, to the right, divide to the left, to the left, to the left. So I'm going to multiply, I'm gonna move it to the right, I'm gonna move it to the right, four times because that's my power of 10. So I'm going to hop it one, two, three, four. That's where my decimal is now. If you see a blank space, put a zero in. So how long is the racetrack in standard form? It is 13,200 feet long. Let's move on to part B. Mr. Tessar's race car is three and five tenths yards long. If he walks six times the length of his race car, how far did he walk? Well, there's a pretty obvious word in here to help me know how to solve this problem. He's going to walk six times the length. Well, the length was three and five tenths. So right there is my equation, six times three and five tenths. When I set this problem up, however, I'm going to put three and five tenths on top because it has the most digits. Then I'm going to line up my digits, not my place value, because the very first thing I do before solving it is hop that decimal out. So I'm really doing 35 times 6, which is why I line it up the way that I did. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. Last thing I'm going to do is hop that decimal right back in. I took one hop out, so I'm going to take one hop in. Now that zero no longer matters. So my answer is just 21. 21 what? Let's go back to the problem. It wants to know how far he walked. So I know I need a unit for distance. Going back to the problem, I see that we're talking about yards. So he's gonna walk 21 yards. And there's my answer for part B. So there you have it, friends. That's the rest of your study guide. If you missed any of the videos, be sure to check them out on the blog or in Seesaw. Make sure you've checked your whole study guide. Bring any questions with you tomorrow in class. Our test is on Friday. This study guide will definitely help you prepare. Good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow.